Hi there, welcome to Celebrate Creating with Catherine. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple needle felted tree. You're going to need felting foam, needles, core wool, you're going to need more than this, a color of wool that you're going to top your tree with, and it doesn't have to be green. Go crazy, do something wild. Then we're going to top that with wool locks. You're also going to need a wooden skewer or craft stick. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, let's start wrapping the core of our tree. I'm going to make my tree approximately, you know, four to five inches tall. So I'm going to go four to five inches in to my craft stick or skewer, what, uh, skewer, whatever you're using, and I'm going to start wrapping there. And if you're a left-hander, I guess you'd start probably from this end and start wrapping. So we're going to wrap here and wrap to the end. I've got a, a strip of core wool here. It's kind of big. You, do, you don't have to do it that big. My, in fact, you know, let's just let's just make it a little easier. All right. And I'm going to start wrapping. And you know, you can also just turn your skewer. That also works. And you want to get it nice and tight for that beginning there. And then we're just going to wrap tightly around our stick. push that up a little bit. All right, so you've seen, seen me wrap tightly to almost the end. I'm going to add some more here. Keeping it tight, but not so tight that I'm pulling my wool apart here because that's kind of loose. You can see that's loose right there. I'm going to keep wrapping here. All right. And now I'm going to head back, went to the end, and I'm going to head back the other direction. And we broke off, not a big deal. Actually, what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and take, I have two needles I'm working with at the same time. You can do one or two. And I'm going to poke. Notice I'm going to go at an angle. I'm not going to go straight in because that will most likely hit the wood and break the needles, but at an angle, just like the angle of the stick here. Just little bits of poking. Watch your fingers. Oop, got one. And there it goes. It stays while I continue. All right. Some more core wool here. I'm going to keep wrapping. And we're going to wrap so that, obviously, we're going to get thicker on the bottom. Now, don't worry about lumpiness or unevenness right now. Just going to tack it in as we keep adding. Very careful not to go straight in to the wood. All right, well, that'll hold it. Let's keep doing this. I'm going to start here at the base again. I think I'm just going to wrap that. Let's stick with the bottom right now. Stick with the base. Now don't be concerned if your tree stretches out down here more than you planned. We're going to flatten that bottom and if you have a specific, uh, like a real precise height you want the tree, we'll be able to uh, correct that if you need to. Okay, I'm going to still do at the base here. Okay, 
Now you can see I'm not really concerning myself with how even my strip is of wool. Maybe I should, but I know um, it will all work out in the end, so I'm not real concerned about it. Again, noticing the angle, I'm not going into the wood. I don't like breaking needles. All right, just felting enough so it doesn't unwind here. Mm, felt this a teeny bit. I'm going to uh, start about here. Now, I'm sure there's people out there that do this much neater than, than I do. But, hey, it's me. But trust me, when it's all said and done, it will look very good. All right, so you see we're, we're getting a little bit of the shape here. So let's see, let's go. Thicken this bottom still. And you can see it's kind of starting to pooch out, but that's all right. I'm going to fix it when it's off the skewer. Now also, you know, you can just turn like this. You know, if, if you don't want to wrap it around, you can just turn your stick. a little bit more it's back on the base again all right now that's obviously quite a bit longer than we started have no fear. All right, now I'm going to felt just a little bit more while it's still on the stick. Looks almost like a corn on the cob. Felt a little bit more. Going at the angle of the stick. And now I'm just going to take it off. Okay, it's actually not, it's fairly firm in there, but we obviously have quite a bit of felting to do, so I'm going to start with this bottom here, and I want it to uh, flatten, and I also want it to shorten, so we're going to just work on that right now. So I'm just doing the base, getting that flat, straight in. You can, Like I said, you can do one needle, you can do a couple, you can do several. Um, there are plenty of tools, different tools with different amounts of needles. But when you're starting to wrap this, you really don't want more than one or two um, real close together, otherwise you're not going to be able to felt at the angle you need to to start. All right, and I'm going to just start felting around, and you see all my lumps and bumps. I felt those down. I'm going to felt this down. Watch the fingers. All right. 
right so we're getting getting there now you might want a much thicker uh, bottom of a tree um, or just a shorter stubbier looking tree if so you would keep on wrapping more around the bottom and then you're gonna smooth it in to the rest so this is uh, this is our start okay and so you see what what we're doing and again we're now of course you can go straight in because you don't have the skewer in there or the craft stick whatever you use so you can go straight in and continue to felt nice and dense and and then again smoothing you're going to do the angle felting like this smoothing bumps getting the air out right there where it's all poofy all right so I'm gonna show you a tree I've been working on so you've got the idea again I realize I'm not the the neatest uh, <laughs> core wool wrapper if you will but it just shows that even if you're sloppy like me on wrapping your wool it can still turn out and let me grab one now this was a smaller one I made um, and see how now after working with it for a while I ended up with this little guy now this still has quite a bit of squish in it and I'm going to be adding color right now before I add the the locks we're going to be using so I'm going to grab uh, my colored wool and I'm going to show you how I, I do that this stuff out of the way so I'm going to take a piece that will cover the bottom and then go up a little on the side so I'm just going to pull off a piece here and that will definitely cover the bottom and see how I just fold it over like so and I'm gonna go ahead and felt that on going just up the bottom here now you can do it thick you don't have to do it thick because you will be having locks on top of this but I really don't like uh, the core will just show through so All right so there's the bottom you can see it's a little thin a little bit more hopefully you can see it Now, I'm, I'm not felting this down right now because I'm actually going to wrap more wool around the sides. So, let's get a strip. And I'm going to start wrapping around the sides like so. This, I'm definitely going to felt down all the way. You know, it's very tricky to try to felt and look at the camera to see if you can even see what I'm doing and not stab yourself. So, doing my best. Let's wrap that over like so. Keep stretching that wool over. You see that? I want to add that if you want something like, let's say that a child could play with, you don't probably want to put the locks on it. Um, the locks are beautiful, which you're going to see here in a minute. 
but let's say you wanted to do something more for a toy those will come off pretty easy but if you felt a tree like this and then maybe add some other color to make it fun and interesting it would be um, much more suitable for a child's hands I guess you could say so you're seeing how we did that first we wrapped the bottom piece right here and then we wrapped the color around here and now we'll and we're gonna wrap it all the way around to the tip alright and smooth it out really well and it's still pretty squishy we want it a little bit firmer now when I was talking about another color let me grab one All right, so let's say you wanted to uh, do something more child-friendly. I mean, you could do any color. I mean, by the way, you certainly don't have to do a green tree. You're an artist. Do something fun and funky and different. So you could add strips of color. You could wind them around or just put, like, stripes. Anything you want. So that's just a, another idea if a, a child's going to be playing with it. So I'm going to show you a tree that I've been working on because it does take a while and I'm not going to bore you with uh, you know sitting on here for an hour felting because I tend to felt a lot. So here's, here's one. It's a bigger one and it's firm enough but not so firm that the locks won't stay on. Alright so actually first thing I'm going to do uh, because I have core wool on my mat, I'm going to go ahead and clean that off. You can use tape, and I found this brush, I forgot what it's called, but this is like plastic, or rubber, I guess, and it's going to um, pull the fuzz right out of my mat here. All right. And these are the beautiful locks that I got from Serafina Fiber Art. I just love the color. Sort of a, a blue-green. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Woo! And we're going to put these on our tree. All right, I've never used any this long. This is going to be interesting. Hmm. All right. So, I've got my locks here. What I'm going to do is just take the middle of the lock and start to, starting at the bottom, making sure that it's uh, got enough to Go right to the bottom of the tree there. So I'm right in the center of the lock. Let's see if you can see that. And that's where I'm going to start tacking. put a very light tack right here. Get a little bit of control. These are a bit different than what I've used before. They're pretty, but they're also really, I don't know, stuck together. Alrighty. So this is going to be different. All right, and we have lots of vegetable matter. Mm -hmm. All right, pulling that apart, go over here. Show you again. Right here, folding the lock in half, starting to tack it down. This 
just a little tacking down there. Another lock right in the middle. All right, you get the idea. And you know, gosh, you don't even have to do it this way. Seriously, you could wrap locks around on the diagonal, just, you know, all the way around. You could do them straight down like this, all the way down. Really, it, just be creative and have fun. So I'm going to continue, and just FYI, as I continue to do the locks, if I can get a piece off here, uh, see, I'm stuck. I will continue another layer. So this is like bottom layer all the way around. And then my next layer, straw, you guys, straw, will go a little bit higher and drape over the previous. All right? So I'm going to continue to do that. Um, again, you can tuck this in um, or tack it in with your needle until you feel confident. But I'm trying to keep the bottom kind of loose and then the top tacked in real well so it doesn't just come out. All right, so I'll be back. As I continue to um, put the locks on the tree, I want to bring something to your attention. Um, I've gotten most of my locks and uh, felt and supplies from livingfelt.com, and I've always found that it was very easy to pull the locks apart. This, for some reason, I don't know if it's just this batch, but as I'm pulling apart, you see how fuzzed out it's getting right there? Normally that doesn't happen. So what I'm having to do as I put it on my tray, see how fuzzy that part is right there? I'm having to sort of uh, tack it down. See all these fuzzy ends right here? I don't really like the fuzzy ends. So I'm just showing you what I'm having to do with the supplies I have. I don't want it close in, but when I see the big fuzzy ends right there, like that, I'm just going to sort of tack those up so it doesn't look so messy. And also, when I'm all said and done, I can also trim little ends with scissors. So I just wanted you to see that, because normally I can pull a lock off and it's not so stuck. Now that one didn't do too bad so that's still fairly tight. Let me see, move the tree out of there. But if you end up fuzzies, I'm tucking in the fuzzies. Alright, just wanted to show you. A couple of final thoughts as I'm taking care of the last details. You know, I told you I don't like those little fuzzies. So what I'm doing, or one of the things I'm doing, is I'm wrapping them around the needle and tuck in. So if you have anything really big sticking out, you can wrap it in and just tuck. Excuse me, wrap around, tuck in. Wrap around, tuck in. Now I noticed all this fuzzy on the bottom here. See all that? I'll take me some sharp scissors and cut it off. You can do that anywhere you want. If your tree's too fuzzy. Get a little bit more. And a final thought is, um, and also, you know, you can fluff these out. So, like, I store mine in a Ziploc bag and I pull them out for decoration in the winter. And uh, I just lightly fluff them out. 
if they get a little flat from you know being stored on their side but I want to say if you find your tree is not sitting flat all you have to do is take your needles or needle and you're just going to poke down on that bottom and get it nice and flat and you can also just do that with your tree. and there we have it and here's our finished tree if you enjoyed this video please give me a like and if you'd like to see more of my videos feel free to subscribe to my channel but whatever you do have a great day